If you have layering stencils, you've got to try this. Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and my studio. Today I'm going to just create a little masked off area and slap on some layering stencils and before you know it, poof, cuteness will ensue. If you've got layering stencils just laying around, <laughs> thank you. Give this a try today. It's a really fun way to create a beautiful panel for any card project. To see my card, stick around. It's coming up next. Here's a look at some of the products I'll be using today, and you can do this with any layering stencil that you have. Today, I'm going to use the Gina K Designs Layered Carnations. I have a piece of white cardstock, and what I have done is I've taken Masking Magic. Now, Masking Magic comes in strips as well. You can buy it pre-cut in strips. I wanted to have a slightly wider strip, so I cut four pieces to be three quarters of an inch. I want this to be a different border. But what's nice about this is you can do this and make a nice border and crop, so to speak, your image any way you like. So I am going to get all of this set up and we're gonna get started with some ink blending. I'm actually going to use my Waffle Flower Grip Mat just because I want to employ the assistance of the stick with the stencil. And I'm going to go ahead and take my magic or masking magic layers here. I have to get them peeled back a bit. And I'm going to go right on the edge of each part of this. Now I don't, I guess I don't need all of this, but the other thing too is I may, I'm not sure yet, I may decide to trim this down as well. And that I haven't decided because. I don't really know what, I don't, I don't always know what the design is until I get to the end. So we'll get these placed right to the edge to create this nice three quarter inch margin that surrounds the panel. Now that I have them down, I'm just gonna run my finger along that little inner part there to make sure it's nice and tight to the paper. And then I'm going to take my stencils. Now let's see how many are in here. We have greenery, more greenery, that, and that. So we have two layers for the florals. And what I'm going to do is, well, let's see. I think I'm going to start with layered carnations. Are these numbered? They are. I'm going to start with number one. And I'm going to purposefully offset it so that it is slightly out of the boundary of the masking. Some of it will bleed and some of it will not. So I want the big one to be fully encased, all right? But I'm gonna use the grip mat here to hold this. And just so that I don't forget what I'm doing here, I'm going to lift up a little piece here of this, cut it, because I, I, I don't want to waste. Waste not, want not, right? And I'm just going to put it right here so that I know that is where we're going to line up and the top. Does that make sense? All right. Let me grab my brush, and I'm going to clean my brush very quickly. And the way I clean my brushes before I use them is just to run them over a paper towel, because I'm not sure what color I was using last time. And you can see this color starts to come off. But the nice thing about this too, it kind of primes your brushes, right? So it gets them, it kind of wakes them up. That's what I like to say. Wake up. Good morning. All right, that looks pretty good. You just kind of want it to be mostly coming basically clean. So let's start with Light Orchid. And I'm going to load up my brush and get that in there very nicely. I'm actually going to tap a little off just to kind of distribute it in my bristles. And now I'm gonna hold my stencil down even though it's stuck. I just wanna make sure that I get a nice blend of color over this carnation. Okay, we're just bringing in our first color. And you wanna pay extra attention to make sure you go all the way over where your little masked areas are, right? I guess I'll pick that up from there. And blend. Okay. 
I change direction to when I'm blending. Just work that color in, okay? Like that. Maybe a little more. That looks good. Now, I'm going to grab the next color in my trio here, and this is medium orchid, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a little medium orchid. In fact, I think I'm gonna use a smaller brush. I know Gina K just released some small detail brushes, which are really nice to have. In fact, I do have, I have some smaller detail brushes too, but I think the size that I want, but again, so you gotta kinda wake up your brush. So if your brush feels at all stiff, because you haven't used it in a while, make sure you give it a good, a good wake up so it feels nice and soft again. And I think this might not be the right call to, oh, see, look at that color. I really like to blend it into the brush this way, okay? And then I'm just gonna bring a little at the base here, like that. A little at the base here, like that. Isn't that pretty? so glowy oh I love it but you got to be careful when you come in with these right because I'm gonna just do a little in the middle here and then kind of blend it out like that okay very light hand here all right and that's just gonna give us a little bit of a glowy look like that All right, I'm just gonna wipe that up so I don't put my hand in it. Let's lift this little friend up and I'm gonna clean this stencil off really quickly, but look at how pretty that is. Oh, so nice. I'm gonna use just a little uh, rubbing alcohol here that I keep in a spray bottle, kind of shield your project from it if you're spraying close like I am. And then I can just take this Alcohol works great for this. I mean, it is gonna, purples and pinks and reds do tend to, in fact, this is not the cloth I love. They tend to stain things and that's okay. But I just wipe once and kind of figure, eh, once it's off, it's clean. All right, that looks great. All right, now I can bring in stencil number two. And now, because I know that I'm lining it up at the top, and with that little tape mark, I've sort of, well, of course you can actually look right onto your, your piece too. That's, it's not that hard. It's really easy to line this up. It's covering our pieces that we want covered. And now, now I can bring in, oh, I guess that really was my deeper, wasn't it? You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this one again because I don't know if I wanna bring in the dark orchid. I don't know, because now, well, let's try it. Let's go back to medium orchid. Okay. Tap, 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 tap. And I'm gonna go over this one. Like that. Okay. These are so pretty together. Oh, that actually does bring in some nice, uh, well, I didn't realize it was gonna do that. Okay, I'm good. You know what I'm gonna do? I, I'm going to take the darkest one now, the dark orchid, and just bring up the bases, oh yeah, that is darker, of these guys right here. There we go, like that. Purple flowers, I'm telling you, they're so fun. All right, and let's do a little in the center just for that little extra depth. Gosh, that's pretty color. Okay, that looks good. And again, let me get this stencil cleaned up, but I will lift this up so you can see it. Oh, now that is pretty. All right, I'll clean this up and we'll get the greenery started. All right, I have lined up the greenery here. The sticky mat really does help to kind of hold that in place. And now I'm going to bring in jelly bean green. 
and let me get my green brush primed. So again, we're gonna load up our brush, do some tapping into the bristles, and let's just add some greenery. It's gonna be so pretty. Okay. Coming on up and blending that. These come together so quickly. Love that about layered stencils. They make you look so fancy. I love it. Okay, blending, blending, and blending. All right. Like that. Okay, that is stencil three. Get this cleaned up and we'll move on to stencil four. So pretty. I have lined up the fourth stencil. And for this one, I'm going to bring in just a little grass green. I just wanted a little bit darker of a green, not a whole lot darker. It'll be kind of subtle, but I think this will look nice and we'll just blend that on like that. Okay. I think I was a little off on my stencil lineup, but I think that's okay. Give it a little charm. There we go. That's the thing with this too. It, they are forgiving. You know, if you get a little offset in what you're doing, no one's gonna look at it and say, <laughs> you, were to, you really should have thought that one through, Kath. You know, I think they're gonna be like, that is a beautiful, magical thing. All right, moving on. So now I have a thought. I'm gonna take most of this heavy ink off the brush, okay? This is, this could just serve to ruin the whole thing. But what I would like to do is bring a little detail to the edges and it's light, right? I don't have much happening here. I'm just working on bringing a little to the edge like that. You can almost barely see it, but I think this is gonna work, okay? Little like that, little like that. So we have just a little and then on the green side, I mean, this could look weird. I don't know. Getting most of that up. Then we're gonna do the same down here. I have taken a lot of ink off this, and right now it looks like nothing, but it, it's not going to when I take it off. It's just gonna fill in, and so we're sort of doing, I don't wanna say catty corner, or kitty corner. I don't know what they say where you grew up, but where I grew up was kitty corner. We're kind of doing, green framing out the base here like that and the purple is kind of bringing up here now I don't know if this is going to be enough it might not be glowy enough but I think it will I think it will it's just going to be a little okay so we see how we have that okay let's see let's peel and reveal and see if we made a mistake or if that was the smartest thing ever because I didn't want to overlap the purple and green, but let's peel it up. Oh, yes. I think I'm really glad I did this because look at how cool that looks. Masking and adding an edge. Oh my gosh. I think this is so cool and I'm so glad I did it. That looks like a print. Like I just created some kind of funky print and I love it. All right, I need to think about my greeting. Um, so I'm gonna set this aside, get all this cleaned up, and we'll add a little greeting to the piece. So I pulled a piece of cardstock. This is Concord and Ninth Fig. And I'm going to stamp a greeting in this color because I think that matches so nicely. And what I've got here is, of course, my my Misty, love the Misty. I probably don't need to have a piece this big, but I have a new birthday basic stamp set. This has been very popular over at Simon Says Stamp. And even though it is birthday themed, I am going to use uh, your a gift. I've had a lot of people say, I really love that stamp. Could you just do a set that's just your a gift? And I'm like, well, you know, I, I do my best, but we're gonna stamp and emboss this in white and then I have a coordinating die as well to cut this out. But again, I do wanna stress that any layered stencil you have 
when you mask off and then create a little grounded area, it's really fun. And that sort of visual tension that you get definitely creates a very cool graphic look. So I'm going to powder this up with my anti-static powder, like that. And we'll use Versamark Clear Embossing Ink. Get that inked up. And I'm going to bring this down and transfer. I actually have my little pressure tool here, so I might as well just gently apply pressure. I am going to do this twice, just for a very nice coating of the Versamark. Okay. Now let me grab my piece of paper that I pour my powder into. And I'm going to add some Brutus Monroe powder. This is the alabaster color, a really nice vibrant white. Okay. And yeah, that, that's going to look nice. All right. Let that sit again and slide off. All right. Get this funneled back in, and I will clean this up with my brush if there's any areas that have powder where I don't want powder. Although, you know what, that looks pretty good. I have these really fun little cheap small brushes that are called angled shaders. And they're very nice for getting in on areas where you have a little tiny bit of powder. For anyone who's new to stamping and you wonder how do you not have embossing powder sticking everywhere? That's why the, an anti-static powder tool, there are several out there. I really actually love this one. I've been using it for well over a year. That's where they come in because then they remove all static and oil so that your powder only sticks where you put it. Plus, some card stocks are toothier. They're more textured. And even though it's very subtle, some just are more than others. And sometimes uh, the the powder will stick. Let me get my heat tool warmed up and we'll melt this powder. All right. That looks lovely. As soon as it's cool, I will just buff off where the anti-static powder was and we'll get the dye to cut this out. Also, I recently replaced my heat tool with the Wagner heat tool. This is a new design from a couple years ago. It used to be a straight tool and someone had asked me, um, where did you get the little stand? Well, the stand comes with it and you can like, I think it folds up. Yeah, it folds up and you for storage, but I just keep it down and I just keep this now to the side of my desk area. I have a little desk or like under table thing that slides out and um, I just keep it like that all the time. So. And now this is ready to buff. Oftentimes I'll just take my e-cloth here. These come in multiple colors, but this is the one that I like the most. I think it's considered the glass cleaning. I don't know, I just love it. But sometimes your powder might leave a residue. This is where it's okay to come back in with your fingers because your fingers just have natural oil on them. Let me grab the die. I've got my coordinating die taped into place. I'm gonna put my plate on top and I'm gonna run this through my die cut machine and I'll show you where that is. It's over here, right next to me. And we'll run it through. And it's on this wonderful little um, rotating table from Anna Griffin. And it, it's nice because you can store your plates in here. And I, well, I actually really like that. Okay, I don't haven't been showing my die cut machine lately, but you know, when I was new at card making, look how cute that is, um, I kind of soaked up all the info I could. And so I'm gonna cut a few more layers of this just for some dimension. So I always think it's nice to remember the newbies, right? I've only been making cards since 2017. And uh, I always have to, again, just remember, there, there you are, uh, if you're new and you're thinking, how do, they, how do they get those cut out? Well, it's the wonderful world of coordinating dies. And I'm telling you what, that's what rocks my face off every time I have a greeting that I can do this with. I think I'm going to do maybe one more layer just so this has that little extra dimension. And then we will proceed with our card design. 
I am going to glue. Where's my glue? Uh, another thing I have to show you because people ask, and now I now I have a new one. I use the fine tip bottles for my liquid glue. I use Connect Glue from Gina K Designs. But there is a lovely lady who creates these little uh, pins that go in the top of the fine tip bottles. I have been using pins from her for a couple years and I've never ever had an issue. Um, and she makes cute little beads for the top now. So I think that's really cute. And um, that's, that's how I keep my my glue fresh. There are little lids things that come with it, but I just really like the pins and uh, and I love these little squeeze bottles. Oh my gosh, for someone like me who does have wrist issues, um, this is a this is a motion that is not hard for me at all. And so if you have those issues, here we go. We're just gonna we're just building up some dimension here. I find that these little squeeze bottles have such a nice give and they're very easy on rickety wrists like the ones that I am the proud owner of. All right, we're just going to build up our dimension. And that way this greeting will it will look like its own little custom chipboard. You know what I mean? Cuz it has that thickness. Oh, that is another thing that I did not know about when I was just in the scrapbook world that card makers glued things together and made them get bulky and then all of a sudden you just had this beautiful substantial little piece oh love it all right uh, make sure I'm lined up well enough and I think doing it with the purple is really nice so we'll just put something heavy on here and let that adhere while that is adhering I am going to trim this down just a little bit okay because sometimes I'm off center and I think I'm off center it is so slight but I want to have a little bit of a border before I pop this onto my note card. So I'm gonna take my favorite die set. This is my Waffle Flower A2 Layers dies, and this friend measures uh, three and three quarter by five. So that's a, that's a really nice panel size. And I'm going to get it perfectly lined up so that you still get to see that lovely margin um, it really doesn't matter, you know, I, I suppose I didn't need to mask it off that heavy, but I really wanted to make sure that I had what I wanted. And then I oftentimes will trim them down. So pop you on and let's run you through. One thing I wanted to point out too is when I'm using my plates with this Anna Griffin machine, which I've been using now for about six months, I, well, here's, a, here's another cool trick. These little magnets, they're for nail polish manicures, but you can use them to pick up your dies. But anyway, I cut into the mat. I cut into the magnetic mat and I have been told by Griffinites, the followers, the people who love Anna, that Anna does the same thing. Even though when you get the manual, it is gonna tell you not to do that. It tells you to cut into, um, to have the magnet be on top of your die. And you know what, I don't do that. And so I have had great success just doing this. So now here's my little thought, is that I'm gonna have my little, you're a gift, on this panel. Yeah, if I have something really, really ornate, um, I will bring out the shim that comes with it and then I will cut into a plate and I will add the shim and die, die blade side down will go in there and I'll run it through. And I flip every time I go through. So it's just, this has really been a nice elect electric machine. Um, I have enjoyed enjoyed using this and it's I don't have a lot of space so it's uh well it's always it's always there okay let's get a note card prepped for our card I think lavender would be really pretty and this is also from Concord and Ninth uh, Gina K also has a beautiful lovely lavender I just thought I'll pull this for today I like to mix up my companies every now and then and just try different things this is a really nice pretty color and I was actually planning to do white with this, so I don't know, this was a last minute, this is a last minute change. All right, so we're gonna go like that. Let me get some foam tape on the back of this panel. We'll take the backers off here. I just used my Altenew foam tape. 
This has a pretty standard loft and it will just give us a nice bit of a pop-up on the panel. Forgive my head if it gets in the way, but I need to be able to see. Oh, you can only see the fuzz of my head. That's perfect. Oh, don't slide. You know what? I'm going to tape it. The magnets aren't really enough to hold it sometimes. And if I do a little tape, there we go. Oh, I tell you, tape won't throw my eye off. I'm going to look right over the top and pop that. I think that light lavender uh, is very nice with that frame. I think that's really pretty. Now, all we're gonna do is we're just gonna, well, we could do it off to that side too. You know what, I actually like that better. And here you can kind of see, I don't need to pop it up because it has enough dimension, right? Oh, I'm telling you, layering stencils and you mask, you mask them off add a little blending color to the outside, right? It's just such a fun way to play with your stencils and get a different look. And you could use other materials like post-it tape or post-it notes, but I'm telling you, Masking Magic, the thing that's so nice about it, it just never tears, it just never tears. It's really a wonderful product. And sometimes I hoard it. Oh, I'm gonna come up a little. I need to stop hoarding it and I need to start just using it. You know what I mean? <laughs> So here we break just a little bit out into that margin, and that's another thing you can do in design just to kind of bring your design to life. I wanna make sure that I'm straight. That looks pretty straight to me. Let me get a little something shiny on here to finish this off. I kind of like this arrangement, even though I usually do odd numbers, sometimes you can you know play with it and three here and three here, and then you've got a little bit of repetition and you still leave some open space. So let's oh, flip it cupward. There you go. Oh, now I can't get, the, there we go. We want the cupward. Up we go and a little dab of glue. Boop. Little glue, boop. Let's get that straight. In the open space here. Coming down here, boop, boop, and right in there, boop. And that is my finished card project for today. Okay, there we go. So we have a little shine to finish it out. We have this nice masked and cropped area. And again, if you have layering stencils, give this a try. It's really fun to just create that little margin and do your magic on the inside, peel it, reveal it, and turn it into a gorgeous card. You can find links to all of the products I used in today's video in the YouTube description box. If you're not a subscriber, I'd love to have you. So hit that subscribe button and be sure to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss the next time I post. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day. To see more card projects using layering stencils, check out the two thumbnails I have linked for you below, and I'll see you in those videos.